Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today I'll be doing another what if concept in Wings of Fire. What if Orca beat Queen Coral? The idea was suggested to me by Gaming Thing Z20. Thank you so much for the large list, so shout out to them for the idea. Keep in mind that this video does contain spoilers for the Dragonette Prophecy and the Lost Error, so please keep that in mind. If no one here to this warning and gets spoiled, that's not my fault. Once again, thank you to Gaming Thing Z20 for coming up with this idea. The story is mainly angst in a fight scene, so sorry for not actually doing much of this concept and making it rather filler. Without further ado, let's get into the video. In The Lost Heir, it was revealed that one of Queen Coral's previous daughters, Orca, managed to lose a royal challenge for the throne against Coral. However, what we later learn in the books is that Orca was secretly an animus dragon who enchanted the statue of herself in the royal hatchery to kill any of the heirs to the throne, saying that nobody could stop her, Coral, now from being the queen. It was said that Orca just barely lost the challenge, even though she was incredibly young to be battling her mother for the throne. She didn't even use her animus magic in the fight. However, what would happen if Orca got the upper hand? What if Orca survived the royal challenge? We don't know much what happened in the fight, so a good percentage of this is my interpretation of the events that unfolded. Orca, please, Queen Coral shouted, shocked at the prospect of her daughter wanting to challenge her this young. Reconsider this. You're far too young to be battling me for the throne. You're too ambitious. Orca laughed at her mother. There's nothing you can do about it, Coral. I, Princess Orca of the Sea Wings, challenge you for a fight to the throne. You know how the tradition goes. If I win, I gain all that is yours. Queen Coral was heartbroken. Her firstborn dragonet wanted to kill her this early. Surely nothing good could come of that. Coral knew this day would come, but Orca was way too inexperienced to be taking on a full-grown sealing queen. Nevertheless, it was the tradition. Once the princess called upon the challenge, arrangements had to be made. The entire swing royal court was in shock after the announcement, some even scoffing at the idea. Surely she isn't going to go through that at such a young age. We all know she's bluffing, one said. But alas, the day soon came. Orca had been preparing to take the throne for almost her entire life, though swore an oath to herself that she would seal it properly. Using my match would be a waste, considering I want to show my future kingdom how strong I am on my own. Besides, in the slim chance that she beats me, I don't want to go down in history as the dragon who is too idiotic to use her animus magic. No, I'm going to do this properly to show them all that I'm much more powerful than my mother without any additional help, she thought to herself. Orca was ready, even though her mother still couldn't fathom this thought of such foolishness. Nobody had ever challenged her mother for the throne this early. Some seemings even ran around muttering that Orca was mad and completely insane. Little do they know, the latter was true. Even with barely using her magic, Orca's soul was near complete corruption. Being Coral's only heir made her get all the attention her entire life, everyone thinks she was the greatest and prettiest dragon in the whole kingdom, excluding her majesty. The ego inflation she received is a key factor in her wanting the throne, as Orca soon believed that she could be better than her mother. After all, she was one with animus magic and all the power. Her mother is below her, surely. Almost the entire kingdom sat in the viewing chambers, most jittery with fear. One dragon was going to die today, and most believe it to be Orca. Coral stood over her daughter, her massive size seeming to make Orca appear much smaller than she was. Are you done trying to intimidate me? You know I'm going through with it, so stop your whining and let's begin the fight, Orca said, staring her mother in the eyes. Coral was taken aback by the statement, but not completely surprised deep down. Sighing, she responded. I never wanted anything to happen to you. You're my one living heir, and I wish this day would have come when you actually stood a chance against me. You're only seven, Orca. There's still time to back down. No, Coral. You know the rules. You can't make any exceptions to the tradition, despite your role as queen. I'm ready, even though you say I'm not. One of Queen Coral's most loyal advisors stood in between them, raising a piece of kelp in the air. On this day... One will either keep the throne or lose it. There are no rules except that one must die by the end of the fight. Claws out. Teeth ready. Fight. Immediately, Orca bolted towards Coral, using the weak current in the palace to her advantage. Crow was already prepared, however, and lashed her tail out at the young dragon. Orca, hissing in her turn, sprang again to her mother, her claws digging in Coral's scales. Gasps elicited from the crowd, though both fighters were oblivious to anything else going on around them. Queen Coral bit down on the tender part of Orca's underbelly, and she recoiled in pain. Blood stained the water, the two hundred dragons still somehow on their feet. Coral struck another blow, this time intended towards Orca's snout. A claw sliced through her nose, blood floating everywhere. 
The cloud of dust and blood surrounded the two of them, both kicking and clawing in every direction they could. Quirrell began to grow desperate at the fact that Orca was still on her feet, mercilessly yanking her mother's tail. The two rolled over on the watery stone several times, Quirrell now biting down on Orca's talons. Shrieking in pain, Orca lashed out and spun a foot towards her mother, sending them both flying backwards. Bystanders couldn't even see what was happening as Orca smashed her mother into pillar after pillar, clawing every scale she could reach. She seemed oblivious to the scars and blood that dripped from her own body, her soulless eyes locked on target. Quirrell was completely shocked by her daughter's aggression and unprepared for such a violent fight. She went into an orca flying back in the water, slamming her into a coral reef. Orca merely shook off the attacks, her deadly and sharp talons reaching towards Coral's throat. With one swift movement, she stabbed them into every part of Coral that she could reach, till she lay limp in the water, blood pooling around them. The crowd of dragons watching, having been moved ar around to keep up at the fight, stared at the sight in complete silence. The queen was dead, killed at the murderous claws of her own daughter. There had never been a royal challenge as deadly as this one, and Seawing's gazes were transfixed at the bloody sight with horror. Orca whipped her head around, ready to face her new kingdom. So, when will the coronation begin, was all she replied, her joy clearly shone on her face. Look at this. I killed my mother without even using my magic. I truly am better than her, and better than she could ever be. Nobody moved, still shocked and looking down at their new queen. Orca was covered in her mother's blood and dripping with her own bloody wounds. One of her eyes was nearly swollen shut, the other completely blood-stained and red. Aggression and a twisted version of happiness were displayed in her expression, dragons gawking at the sight. Quirrell's previous royal advisor was the one to approach the new queen, bowing before her. His form shook, quaking at the way Orca was relaxed. Most dragons show a tiny bit of resentment on their faces for killing the queen, but she... she didn't care. The other seemings bowed in confusion and shock, most becoming afraid of Orca and her mother's merciless demise. He finally spoke, kneeling down before her. Queen Orca of the Sea Wings was all I managed to get out. Other dragons followed in his lead, bowing before her. Orca was overjoyed at the thought of everyone now being hers. Thank you so much for having me here today, royal subjects, she began. I am much better than my mother, as you soon will learn. I am stronger and willing to make choices that some may consider reckless, but will prove to be worth it. I am not afraid of a little bloodshed if it leads to a better life for all of us, and I am glad to call myself your queen. After the ceremony, some members of the royal court managed to spew out some very rushed messages of congratulation, most scurrying away as fast as they could. The moment Orca sat on the throne, her subjects cowering before her, she knew something wasn't quite right. The seat I'm sitting on. It was my mother's. This will not do. I'm going to rule forever, not her or her memory. With that, Orca mended the stones around her to form an even larger and deformed chair, her claws shaking with the injuries from the fight. Despite that, she seemed proud of her creation. Quirrell's throne now stood ten times taller than before, the color now a mix of dark gray and green. Shards of icicle-looking stones came out on the top, poking through the previously white marble. What would be an intimidating sight for many proved to be perfect for Orca, despite its wobbly form. The dragons around her were shocked at Orca's use of magic, many standing with their mouths agape or their expressions horrified. Their new queen had animus magic? Every seeming knew the story of Albatross going insane in the Royal Seeming Massacre, but they never actually thought a real animus dragon would rule over them. Smiling at the sight of her subject's horror, Orca tried to reassure them of the seeming future. Fear not, for I am braver than my mother could ever be. I will lead us to success, Sea Wings, Orca said to her troubled court. However, Orca's wishes as queen did not come true. She was met with heresy and rebellion, almost her entire reign, and never had any eggs. She eventually died of murder by someone in the royal court, though the Sea Wings were already headed to tribal despair after such a horrendous reign. As for the book series, Tsunami would have never been part of the Dragonettes of Destiny. In fact, much would be very different. Besides the fact of Anemone never existing in this new universe, the Dragonettes would have had nobody with Tsunami's level of fight left to protect them, and they soon headed towards a desolate demise of the towns of Queen Scarlet, and Clay barely escaping the cave by himself. Even with Orca being murdered, the whole seeing tribe is practically doomed. So many were executed through horrible magic methods, with few left who actually remembered what it was like to live without such a horrible ruler. So, in the end, the series would have been vastly different from the result that was given to us. If only Queen Coral had managed to get the upper hand like she did in the books, this whole universe would have been a lot more stable. Anyways, that's pretty much all I have for this video. Once again, thank you to GameThingZ20 for giving me this idea. 
What do you guys think? Let me know down below. If you have any what if ideas, tell me them in the comments. But use yours, you'll be given full credit. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.